Before we start this video, a small message from Sensei. Hey guys, Utako Sensei here. I wanted to make this part with my own voice, but whenever I try to record it, I keep getting nervous. So I asked Dolan to do the voiceover. Anyways, you guys were wondering why I haven't posted any videos for almost the past six months. Well, the reason is I had my exams going on, which put me under a lot of pressure and stress. Although it's not like that was the main reason. Even with that, I was still posting videos every week. But with exams going on, I had some serious personal family issues, and I couldn't focus on stuff. Sadly, I can't say what in detail, because I don't want to post my personal and family issues on the internet. Sorry. Maybe someday I might open up my private life if I feel like it. Anyways, after everything slowed down, I was very stressed and burnt out. So, I needed a little break. And I'm sorry for almost a six-month break without informing you guys of anything. Since I'm back to posting content again, you guys might be thinking, what can I expect? Well, I'm going to keep posting more anime recommendation videos like top 10s, but alongside them, I'm going to start posting more shorts related to anime, manhwa, manhwa, manga, and 18 plus manhwas. <laughs> and yeah, don't forget the recap videos too. So don't worry thinking you won't be getting any anime content and be ready for it. Hello boys and girls and welcome back to another video. In today's video, Otaku Sensei will be recommending anime where the main characters surpass God's power level. Hopefully in this list you will find your new fave show, and if not, hey, at least we tried, and tried is the key word here. But before we roll the kawaii intro, I'm morally obligated to tell you to follow me on Twitter. And recently, I made a new account on Threads, the new platform by Instagram. So if you use Threads, please follow me there too. Both links are in the description. Now without further ado, Let's start. Tell me pretty lies, look me in the face. Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake. Cause I don't fucking care about you. Number 10. We kickstart this list with Spirit Blade Mountain. Long ago in the nine provinces of Kyushu, a calamitous event was prophesized to take place. Falling comments would exhaust the spiritual energies of both the heavens and the lands, and thus bringing about an age of chaos upon the world. But contrary to the prophecy, the comets passed by with no calamity taking place. At the same time, as if touched by the phenomenon, a boy was born in a remote village of the Soke region by the name of Oriku. Twelve years later, as the memories of the event have faded from people's minds, the Reikensun clan, one of the five supreme sects of the nine provinces, decides to hold an examination in order to gather the most talented individuals fit to become disciples and eventually sages. Hearing about this news, Oriku and his servant Ocho head down toward the site, unaware that the organizer Obu, despite her elegant appearance, is infamous for being extremely irresponsible and carefree hence making the trials and the examination unpredictable. Number 9. Next we have the Silver Guardian. Catchy name, isn't it? After getting saved from drowning, the MC of the show falls in love with the hot chick who saved him, which is a natural, normal teenager behavior. However, falling in love with the girl who saved your life doesn't stop Riku, aka the MC, from acting up as he also gets drawn to another girl, a new friend he meets in Dungeon Century, his favorite online RPG. But when the game is scheduled to shut down, he realizes he will not meet her again. However, to his luck, he finds out that Rei Taka, the hot chick who saved him, is the online girl he was playing with. Soon after the game is closed, the girl gets kidnapped in a new game that she suggested for the new playdates, hence our boy now needs to play through the game and save his princess. Number 8. In 8th place, we have Tsukimichi Moonlit Fantasy. Makoto Misumi finds himself sent to another world to meet the goddess and become the hero. However, the deity deems Makoto to be hideous, refusing even to lay eyes upon him, and revokes his heroic title, disdainfully giving him the ability to understand all languages except the human language as compensation. The goddess drives Makoto off to the farthest edges of the wasteland, far from human civilization. Due to the disparity between Earth and this new world, Makoto's inherent physical and magical capabilities awaken, making him extremely powerful. He meets various demi-humans and mythical beings, who all ended up being captivated with his characteristics and join Makoto in building a new community where all of them can peacefully coexist. 
Number 7. In seventh place, we have Heroic Age. Over time, humanity suffers at the hands of the more dominant races and is now facing extinction, a fate that doesn't look so far from us. However, helping humanity to avoid that fate is a hot princess who sets out after a prophecy to search for the powerful being who might be able to save humankind. She meets a wild-haired boy on an abandoned planet, a fateful encounter that will not only change the fortunes of humanity, but also the fate of the universe. Heroic Age is a 2007 action military mecha anime, so if that's your cup of tea, then go for it. Number 6. In 6th place, we have Vermeil in Gold. Alto Goldfield, a diligent student at the Ortigia Academy of Magic, aspires to become a powerful sorcerer, but he is unable to become one. Despite his excellent grades and strong commitment to his studies, he fails his summoning class. With the threat of repeating a year hanging over his head, Alto tries following an old, worn-out grimoire in a desperate attempt to resolve his situation. To his surprise, he succeeds and summons a powerful demon named Vermeil. As a sign of gratitude for releasing her, Vermeil agrees to become Alto's familiar, sealing their relationship with a deep kiss. Number 5. In 5th place, we have Campione. As the result of defeating the God of War in Mortal Kombat, 16-year-old Kusanagi is stuck with the unwanted position of Campione, or God Slayer, whose duty is to fight heretical gods whenever they try to muscle in on the local turf. It's a job that comes with a lot of responsibilities and problems. It's like the anime version of the God of War games, but with a busty hot harem that consists of four female followers that aid the MC in his demigodly duties instead of stabbing him in the back. No spoilers, though. Oh, did I also mention that there are some steamy kiss scenes that give the main character a massive power-up and give us a small rise up in the pants, which will force you to sit down and cheer our boy on as he kicks some heavenly ass. Number 4. In 4th place, we have Dead Mount Deathplay. In another world, a hero named Sir Shagra Edith Lugrid is about to finish off a powerful necromancer known as the Corpse God. However, the Corpse God uses a unique magic skill to reincarnate themselves into another world and ends up in modern day Shinjuku in the body of a boy named Poko Shinoyama, who has just had his throat slit by an assassin. Thinking that this new world could provide the peaceful life he desired in the last one, the corpse god takes on Polka's identity and soon integrates himself with the Shinjuku underworld under a woman named Clarissa and her underlings. Number 3. In third place, we have Platinum End. Mirai Kakahashi is a young orphan high school student who lives with his abusive aunt and uncle after the death of his parents. One day, Mirai decides he can't take it anymore and attempts suicide, but is saved by a guardian angel called Nase, who also gives Mirai special powers. Upon learning from Nase that his aunt and uncle were responsible for the deaths of his father and mother due to their jealousy and hatred towards them, Mirai uses the powers that she bestowed to him in order to enact justice upon them. Nase soon after informs him that God will retire in 999 days, and 13 candidates to replace him were selected, one of which is Mirai. To make matters worse, not only is Mirai forced to take part in the contest to decide the next God, but some of the other candidates will do anything to win, including killing all of the other candidates as soon as possible. To combat these ruthless killers, Mirai forms an alliance with several other candidates who share his goal to win the contest without killing any other competitors. Number 2. In second place, we have the Eminence in Shadow. A boy in modern day Japan desires to be a mastermind who exerts power from the shadows. But in the process of training, he gets isekai'd by the almighty Truck Kun. He's reborn in a fantasy world as Sid Kagano, where he maintains a perfectly mediocre appearance as to not stand out and pursue his dream of manipulating from the shadows. One day, he stumbles upon an elven girl infected by a mysterious disease and cures her. Sid makes up a story, explaining to her that this world is secretly run by the cult of Diablos, and his secret organization, Shadow Garden, are the only ones that can fight them. The elven girl, now named Alpha, joins the organization and begins recruiting new members. However, the stories Sid made up were actually true, but he believes it to be a total delusion. Sid continues fighting the cult of Diablos under the alias Shadow, completely unaware that he is involved in a complicated power struggle. 
number one. And finally, we have the reincarnation of the strongest exorcist in the world. The strongest exorcist in the world is murdered by jealous members of the Imperial Court due to his incredible power, but casts a spell of rebirth on himself to have a second chance at a better life. He awakens in an alternate world as Seika, son of a noble Blaze Lamparogue, but cannot use this world's form of magic. However, Seika has retained his exorcist powers and demon servants, but hides this from his family as he hopes to cultivate a happier life by becoming more cunning than in his previous life. This video ends here, and I want to especially thank all those people who support me through Patreon and the channel membership program. And if you guys also want to support, you can become a channel member or use the Patreon link in the description. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media like Twitter, Instagram, threads, etc. for updates related to stuff, and also use the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this list, as well as got introduced to new shows. If you did, then leave a like, and if you didn't, consider still liking since it'll help me grow a bit more more. Share with your buddies, and if you're already subscribed to the channel, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you haven't, it's alright. <laughs> you can do it later. There's no rush. Until next time, try to keep the comments section wholesome. Peace out.